I'm one sorry, here. my camera wasn't there. Oh, we, we thought you did that on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I did for just a moment, but I thought it came back. I'm, I'm so sorry. No, okay. it, it, it only lasted as long as it took for the cat to scream bloody murder. <laughs>
what you doing about it? Man, I, the, my wife gave me uh, gave me uh, almost a blink check. Not only, not exactly a blink check, but pretty close from my budgetary means. And uh, I went out and I got a, I bought all the parts, man. They're on their way. They're on their way. It's only going to take two weeks to get here, but they're on their way. <laughs> Just in time for you to leave. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to basically, it'll be my pet project uh, until my TMO uh, comes to pick up my stuff and move it to my next si- assignment. So, yeah, that's going to be awesome, though. Right on. So you're rebuilding a machine. I'm sorry to jump in, but I, you're rebuilding a machine or you're build, building from, from Building from scratch, yep. I'm building a, awesome. uh, a Hackintosh from scratch. I've never built a Hackintosh before, so there's a lot of research that went into it and everything else. And, uh, um, of course, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blog the whole thing. I'll put you know, notes and everything else up on the, on the page and all that stuff. But uh, I'm really excited about it. It's been, dude, how long was it, 2005? I, built your, well, I helped you build your computer and then went back home and built, uh, built almost an identical one for myself. So yeah, it's, it's, it's been 11 years since I've actually built a computer. Yep, and that's the last time I did it too. Yeah, that's nuts. So I'm really excited about that. I'm, I'm, I, I love, love, love. Um, oh damn, my video's been jacked up the whole time. There we go. Now, <laughs> now you can actually see the real video, people. That's why we're still in beta. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're using I... our excuse. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we live and die by that excuse on this show. <laughs> I saw so. the shirt and I kind of really wanted it, but I'm poor. <laughs> <laughs> but you do have an anal shirt, so you know. I do. Yeah, yeah. You, um, need, you, you need an oral one for the Orlando night attack. Uh, uh, see, Kent, are you gonna are you gonna try to make it down there? <laughs> man, I I can try. I don't know if it'll happen, but we'll see. Uh, that's a no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't yeah, know, I, man. I, I, I can't imagine why anybody would go directly to orlando if they didn't have to I, I i actually might be working there so um i'll hop over if there's if i'm there in their activities mm. yeah i i've never I been i just can't go to orlando in july uh voluntarily uh yeah <laughs> yeah exactly exactly i i can't go to florida voluntarily unless it's just to go to disney mm. like the whole state is just too humid for me mm-hmm. so I don't think it's, it's not like a little boot on the or foot or something. It's like a armpit, man. I just, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's rough stuff. Rough, and no, rough and stuff. nothing against Floridians. I mean, if you like that stuff, that's, that's all you, but, uh, you know, not me. I, yeah, I would, I would definitely say that I'm 90% Floridian because that's where I kind of grew up, went to college, did all of that. Uh, and then once I made it to California, I, I thought I'm never going back to Florida ever <laughs> Uh, but, but I, but I have to for family and work and stuff. And, so, um, so did you go just straight coast to coast? Like you never lived in the middle anywhere? No, I haven't lived. No, 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 no. That's not true. <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> believe it or not. I went to law school for one semester, but it was so hard. I dropped out. Let's not say, but not Harvard. <laughs> let, let, let's not say uh, dropped out. Let's say uh, 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 focused on areas of higher aptitude. Uh, yeah, marijuana. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> See? See, this is easy. <laughs> Speaking of marijuana, I was looking through HBO Now the other day. I was looking for something to watch, mm-hmm. and they have an entire category called 420 that's all drug related movies and shows you're kidding uh, the entire category that's i sent you the the uh, 420 episode of south park uh no i i, I i've missed so much I, south park i haven't i haven't watched any south park and i can't even tell you how long there's not very much on TV at like three o'clock in the morning when you have nothing to do at <laughs> oh, work. Oh, oh, believe so. me, you, you you don't have to make excuses for what you watch. I mean, that's <laughs> yeah. at, at all. Watch what I, you want on whatever damn device you want. Yeah, I can. Well, I well, get it right. Yeah, yeah. There's there's a plug in there somewhere. Um, <clears throat> I finished uh, I finished House of Cards over the weekend. Speaking of of TV shows, I'm, I'm all caught up on House of Cards, and I got to tell you. Season three was kind of a drone. You, you kind of start saw things start to fall apart a little bit, mm-hmm. and then uh, the beginning of season four, it it wasn't just falling apart; like it was being thrust apart. You know, there's there's a force behind it, and it was just tearing everything apart. Um, and then about halfway through, it started coming back around and got amazing. 
That's interesting, and I I don't know if you're aware. I do a fan cast uh, with the Roberta Villegas for the Bridge Tech Network. Mm -mm. Um, actually, I'm gonna have Tom Merritt on. I'm so excited that Tom Merritt. Like, I it's the one I called in one favor to Justin, Robert Young, and I called in one to Tom Merritt this week. Uh, but we're gonna have Tom on on next uh, Thursday at uh, eight thirty Pacific or nine nine a.m. Pacific. So it's way early, but it's British oh time. Um, and uh, I know Tom is a real trooper to do that. And uh, but 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 yeah, we're we're doing uh, season four, and um, so I'd be really interested. If, hey, you want to be a guest on our silly little show? <laughs> I mean, well, no, it would be early. It's early. Um, well, I don't I'm know I'm, I'm in Korea though, so I don't even know how that time configures. Oh well, I'll figure it out. I'm used to doing that. <laughs> when I book guests, I got to figure out what time they are. So uh, I'll, I'll I'll do that. But uh, if you're ever interested, um, but yeah, no, I thought that um, the show got uh, like you know, I mean, it was really just kind of dragging. And then I don't do, have you watched the UK show? I have not. Okay, I so there there people is, are is that available ever... here, like in the US? Is that easily available? Yeah, you can get on Netflix. Okay. Yeah, and and people are wondering if it's ever going to catch with that show because that was only four chapters or four seasons, but mm -hmm. they call it something different. And uh, but 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 to get to my point, um, I think that uh, that they've 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 got a new showrunner. Um, the, so the original creator of House of Cards is out, and they've got another series. And both Roberto and I are like, oh, another one. We've got to do this again next year. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we just want it over, but uh, yeah, you know. yeah. I'm, it's I'm, it's a lot of fun, but it's but it's also homework. Yeah, at at the end of season two, I was really not all that. I I didn't know where where it would go after that. It kind of seemed like, hey, okay, well, it's done, right? Like he he did it, right, right. Um, and then season three came through, and going into season four, I wasn't really all that enthused. In fact, I, I started. I watched like the first episode, and then it took me another four months to watch the rest of it. Um, but once you hit, once you hit that middle stride, there's no stopping. It's just like your body can't, it can't physically turn the TV off. You, you just have to go. It's a, it's a thrill ride all the way to the end. So an exhausting one. <clears throat> yeah. Hey, Kent, man. Yeah. I didn't even know you were into vinyl. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, I kind of went on a, uh, shopping spree of sorts. Um, last week I was, I walked into the, uh, or, well, no, it was earlier this week. It was like the beginning of this week. I walked into, uh, the local Hastings and they have, they had a, uh, sale on all music. And mm. I was like, ah, oh, crap. Okay. So I went over to the vinyl. <laughs> I ended up walking out with, with four albums and I, I usually don't do that. Usually if I'm going to buy vinyl, it's just like one mm -hmm. yeah, every few months, whatever, I'll pick one up or whatever. Unless I go to like a garage sale or a thrift shop or something like that, then I might go crazy. Cause then they're like a buck a piece or something right um, yeah man i i listened to uh dark side of the moon pink floyd dark side of the moon for the first time ever on vinyl and holy crap dude like that album automatically is like one of my favorite things mm -hmm. ever but hearing it on vinyl it just there's just like a i can't even put my finger on what it is there's just this extra dimension this other layer of sound when you listen to it on vinyl and I, I came, came into this room, the, you know, the studio, the library, whatever, and I closed the door and I cranked up the, the record player and just, just cashed out for basically an hour listening to, <laughs> to it. It was just, it was so good. So, so um, Crunchy, do you know what vinyl is? Yes. <laughs> we, my dad had one and me and my brother used to, um, play dude looks like a lady and dance around the living room all the time <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome i love aerosmith too oh jackie don't don't, oh, don't you ask me about eight track cassette tapes no look look <laughs> I, I will get so angry. i i I'm can't that old. i can't ask you anything that about anything that i remember myself that would just be rude i've actually been looking for an eight track player really yeah, I've I've gone to I think every thrift store here in town looking for an eight track player and yeah. I cannot I, I find stacks and stacks of eight tracks, but not a fucking player. It's driving <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> yeah, no no no. They're they are definitely difficult to come across. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, and I, I mean go, go ahead. something, but mm. yeah. 
Uh, I actually, in my in my real life, uh, quote unquote, I, I'm an archivist, and so I I kind of um, watch, I keep an eye out for stuff like beta recorders, um, uh, eight track players, uh, reel to reel tape players, and converters and that kind of stuff. And and it's 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 really become an eBay um, uh, mm. thing that that that, that it, and it's rare. It's getting more rare and rare. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, no. That, that was one of the uh, one of the very interesting things to me was that. You know, right as I got to, to the point where I wasn't seeing vinyl around hardly at all, mm. is when the vinyl players, you know, the record players started coming out, the digital record players. And mm. I thought that was really awesome. I figured it'd be another resurgence of vinyl, but then I, I, I was expecting it to be showing up in Best Buy and everything else. And I guess maybe my expectations are too high, but it's mm. still readily available in different places, like Kent said. But you just got to wait for the sales and hit them up. Mm. So. True. Yeah, I'm 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 just I'm just so proud of Crunchy for knowing what it was. <laughs> how how old do you think I got? Like, I'm not twelve. I promise. You're 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 clearly the youngest of this group, though. How young do you think she is, and how old do you think I am? I'm I, so insulted because I, nobody. I'm I, a mystery. I, I think I, th- I think you're actually about our age because me and Kent it, are like three months apart. Okay, well, we're just not going to get into that because yeah. <laughs> I'm a lady and I don't have to answer that. We're 23 now. 23? Oh, okay, okay. So you're a little <laughs> bit older than I am. I'm okay. like 21. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, it's not a matter of age. It's, it's a matter of number of times. All right, let's do this. All right, so uh, so this would be a first. This is the first time me and Kent didn't do a TED Talk, but one of our guests has one that they would like to talk about. So, oh, I completely missed that, too. Okay. <laughs> Jackie, tell us about uh, Scott Dinsmore, How to Find Work You Love. Uh, um, excuse me? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm kind of a little bit caught off guard here. I'm <laughs> kind of thrown into what you guys are... Oh, 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 the, oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I, I didn't catch the, the name. I, w- I was kind of going through those, and that was one that hit me, and I just kind of had it there <laughs> and ready in case we needed it ready. But but it's actually something, like, it was kind of a message that, uh, you know, I need all the fucking, I'm sorry, we are family, not family, family friendly, correct? No. Oh, you can say whatever you want. No, no this, is, this, this show is completely NSFW. I need I need all of the reinforcement I possibly need to continue on with what I'm I'm trying to do, and uh, the message of this uh, this uh, TED talks was, um, what's the work you can't not do, and 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 it 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 really it really made a whole lot of sense to me because no matter what I tried to do, like I you know I I went to grad school. Uh, I have a, a raked up the student loans that I will be paying off for the rest of my life for something that I'm very passionate about. Um, you know, I, I really care about, you know, it's openness and transparency and government and blah, blah, blah. But it also depresses the hell out of me. And there is nothing I would rather do than put a sock on my hand and dress it up in a little costume and make little noises and record it. And, you know, I mean, like, there's just things that, that you find yourself sort of drawn to that, that you enjoy. And, you know, I, I've always, you know, I studied art in college. I, I did art as a side. Um, I, you know, I, I, I believe I have some kind of artistic ability, but to me, it was always like, don't even think about that. Don't think about that. Go rake up those student loans, get into, um, you know, get a, a, a master's and blah, 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 or whatever. That's never going to get you anywhere. And so I really like this, that it's, it's what at the end of the day does it make that makes you happy and 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 somehow doing that it it will make you i don't know I, I i guess i'm just trying to keep the dream alive that 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 doing what it is that you're passionate about will actually make make you suc- successful at least in your own peace of mind and i i i i, I know i know that that i don't know i know it's a pipe dream uh but also pipes make me happy so <laughs> <laughs> that's great so this is one of the things that we uh that we really like about ted talks is that there is often a situation where you find one and it really just speaks to you even though it may not speak to a larger <laughs> audience but you definitely identify with it um i'm always happy when people can find a, a little bit of inspiration from something that you know other people are publicly publicly putting out there 
to share. Mm. So, hey, man, um, you got some bad news. Yeah, this week seems to be full of bad news. Yeah, it's 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 not not going all that good. Um, the doves are crying. <laughs> I was uh, I was actually queuing up a uh, purple rain, but um, Prince Prince Rogers Nelson d- passed away. Was it yesterday? Day before? Um, yesterday, yesterday. Yesterday. The twenty first. Yeah. Was, yeah. Uh, and and I, I I wanted to wanted to add this in here for a couple reasons actually. Uh, not the least of which is how I discovered about it, how I found out about it. Um, I was actually sitting in the chat room waiting for TMS. Well, TMS had just finished. The morning stream had just finished on uh, diamondclub.tv. And I was sitting in the chat room and someone said that um, it had, you know, that it had, TMZ had just announced that Prince was dead. And of course, it's TMZ. It's like, ah, oh, that's bullshit. You know? Um, but then it actually came out to be true. And real quick, what was your reaction to it? Uh, well, mine, I'd actually read earlier in the day that someone was found dead in his house. And for whatever reason, that it didn't click to me that it might have been him. And I don't know, it just... It, it was so weird when it, the the way that I actually found out that that he had passed was you texting me saying that that he had passed, hmm. and it was just like this, oh my god, wh- what? Are you serious? Like I, it was, I don't know. It was one of those surreal moments that you know I didn't, you know, obviously I don't know him uh, in real life or anything, but right, it, one of those people that you know you don't you don't think about certain people dying when they're not, you know, if it's an older person, like if it's an artist or an actor or whatever, that's like in their eighties or nineties or something. And you hear of them passing. It's kind of like, eh, okay. You know, I, I'm glad I was able to a- appreciate their accomplishments or whatever. But when so, somebody dies, like in their fifties, like, Oh, I don't know. It just hits. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when you're, when you're at the age that we were at, like we're at that cusp where it's, you know, you start identifying with your mortality and, and wondering what the hell you do with the first half of your life and shit like that. So, um, yeah. Crunchy, and, and you, you, you said you didn't even know he was still alive. I so I'm, I'm guessing you're, you're highly vested in your Prince collection. <laughs> <laughs> Not so much, but I mean, the sad part about that is I didn't know he was still alive because he's not all in the news for like molesting little kids or <laughs> like doing drag race shit like Justin Bieber and shit like that. Yeah. Like, he wasn't a horrible person, so that's unfortunate. Uh, Jackie, uh, what was your impression when you first found out that, that he had passed? Um, well, I, I was kind of dismissed because Roberto had just told me to shut up for the third time uh, after we were wrapping up <laughs> House of Cards. <laughs> and we were in post-show. <laughs> and this time he's like, no, Jackie, no, really, this time, please, just wait, wait, wait. Uh, Prince is dead at age, uh, what, 57 or 58 yeah. or... And I, and I, I, I was completely shocked and I'm sick to death of these people that, um, that, you know, yes, you don't know them, you know, uh, they, 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 they and, 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 and you got, you kind of have to think about how, how wonderful it is that they, they were able to live, live these lives where they could produce such great work. And, you know, I'm also thinking of David Bowie. Mm-hmm. Um, because uh, David Bowie, to me, I, I I can't listen to David Bowie right even today right now without like tearing up. Um, he influenced so many of the artists that influenced me, and uh, of course himself, and 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 the same goes with Prince. And uh, they were they were promoters of of, of great music, um, culture, and 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 you know like lucky for them. I mean, lucky for them that they had these wonderful lives that they were able to do this. But, but then yet they reach so many people and they make such a big impact on people's thoughts. I mean, there's nothing like a song to take you back to a place in time that, that make, remind you of one of the greatest moments of your life and that kind of stuff. And, and so it's, it, it, and to me, so to me, it's, it's really hard. You know, it's, it's, it's almost like losing a family member uh, when you lose someone like that. But, but yet, yet they're not dead. I mean, they, they, they have an advantage that you and I don't have. Um, yes, our podcasts are going to be remembered forever, <laughs> but not quite to the level as Purple Rain. 
Right. You know? yeah. Absolutely. Yep. I don't know if you guys can can hear it right now, but I'm actually streaming uh, Purple Rain underneath the track. So um, I just want to run down a couple quick things here. The, the, the There's no doubting that Prince had a, a significant impact on music and on pop culture. Um, as has been mentioned in the chat room, he was a little bit of a bitchy diva when he wasn't getting his way. Um, which, I mean, that's fine. You know, everybody everybody has their moments, right? Ken's this been, a, pro- Ken's well, been a bitchy diva once or twice. <laughs> uh, um, so uh, seven Grammy Awards won. He was nominated for 32. Best original song score in 1985 got him an Academy Award. I mean, I, I don't know how many how many pop artists can say that, especially considering he was like 23 at the time. Um, for particularly MTV, 1985, that was a big year for yeah. uh, pop music. And that was, of course, for Purple Rain. Um, MTV Music Awards, he won four. He was nominated for 12. A couple amazing uh, appearances on there with his assless chaps and everything else going. Um, uh, He toured every year from 79. He started his music career in 78. He started uh, touring in 79. He didn't stop until, of course, a few days before his death, um, except for three years, 91, 99, and and 05 are the only three years he didn't tour out of that whole span. Um, So 30, what, 30... 36 years or something like that. Um, 39 total albums, four television and or, yeah, four film appearances and two television appearances. Um, wow, that's that's quite a resume for somebody that hasn't been in the spotlight in over a decade, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I don't I don't know what, what all he was producing at the end. I wasn't necessarily listening to the to the stuff that he was doing, but. I know the the music he made influenced a lot of the artists that I did listen to on a very regular basis, and uh, he will be missed. I, I mean, there there are musicians that would never have um, the time of day if it wasn't for his influence and his uh, promoting them. Like nobody would have heard of the Bengals. Uh, you know, um, uh, what was that? Manic Monday was a Prince song. Um, that there, there are a lot of. Yeah, exactly. There are so many musicians that wouldn't have had a chance. And that's what I I like so much about him, and that's also what makes me sad about uh, he, even m- much more him than David Bowie. David Bowie was less of a producer than Prince, mm. um, but uh, you know Prince Prince knew when he found something that was great, and that it, and if he couldn't do it himself, he 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 had enough mindset to say, oh well, this band can do this and do it better, and that, so I'm going to promote them and have them do it. So I'm actually surprised that he ha- hasn't won more awards because you say he was nominated for 32 grammys and only won seven i i think that's kind of a i mean i think we know who's going to get the next lifetime achievement in every category but <laughs> of course oh, of course yeah uh, I wonder if justin timberlake know, could come out for that one too oh god oh god um so yeah. on a uh, on a quick aside i wanted to to mention also um of course prince was huge in pop culture so was david bowie and I I feel it, it it wouldn't it wouldn't meet the situation if we didn't also mention what these two individuals these two male recording artists did for not only uh, uh, sexuality but also for people just striving to to help people be themselves and being able to express themselves and and never backing off from the life they wanted to live the how they wanted to live it and. Uh, I think that's one of those important aspects that maybe people are are going to miss out of this is that Prince was wasn't just a musical icon; he was a culture icon. Absolutely, I I, I don't I keep piping in, and I I'm trying not to. I, I want to let others do that, but that you hit it right, the nail right on the um, head there. Uh, it, it was definitely part of a time where. Uh, it started first with music and then it moved into uh, film and then into television that people started to accept uh, kind of just sort of uh, different ideas of what uh, gender and sexuality was. And, and, and they were definitely um, the themes that, 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 that young kids of those days could uh, put a poster on their wall of Prince or David Bowie and, and say, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I don't, you know, and I mean, I, I kind of felt that way with bands like Duran Duran and other things where, you, you know, it didn't matter. It, it just like these are, you know, great uh, rock musicians that inspire me. And I'm going to, 
he gives you a sense of like independence and freedom that you can't get otherwise. And I think it started with music. So, and, and God, it's a damn shame that these people from this, this kind of era are dying off like this. Stop yeah. it. 2016 sucks for music. And I'm, I'm done. I'm going to let other people talk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so Jackie. Jackie... Go ahead, no, go. Continue. Go ahead. Carry on. Go ahead, Crunchy. <laughs> I was just going to say that Jackie gives me way too much credit. Like she was like, yeah, but if we do the show together, then you won't get to talk as much. I'm like, I don't have things to say. I don't well, talk much anyways. So but it's, it's as you say, Jack, uh, Crunchy, that, that, you know, I talk too much. So like, just, you know. <laughs> that's uh, that's one of the things that I, that I like about that time of the month or this time of the month is um, that Jackie's always like, she holds herself back. She stops herself. She's like, Oh, self-initiated yep. speed bump. Er, let me stop here. <laughs> And then, then she, you know, sp- sends it over to Crunchy, and Crunchy's like, "Oh no, no, I had something to say like three sentences ago, but it's gone now. I've, I forget. I've I already forget. squirreled onto something else. I like what were what were you saying? I have really bad ADD as well. So we're we're we're, we're still in beta. We're working it out. We're we're finding our groove. Yeah. Uh, yeah we- <laughs> okay, so let's let's uh, let's move on to some uh, some different news, uh, some some gadgetry and uh, hackery going on. Uh, the PlayStation Four, the four point five that we mentioned last week, Neo is its uh, is its code name, and it seems to be all but confirmed. Um, improved processor speed, memory bandwidth, and graphics. Uh, looking at starting in October, developers will need to create uh, four and four point five versions of their games to be sold together and. Uh, keep compatibility there can't be any feature differences or anything in between the two and one one real quick note the 4.5 is being codenamed the neo and the psvr was project morpheus so it just kind of goes hand in hand it adds a little bit of credibility to it or just a more elaborate lie but what are your thoughts on that kent um uh, you know i i think it's cool to be upgrading the hardware i mean it's it it's been out for a few years now uh, an upgrade is cool, but man, this whole two version thing, that's, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> Jackie, what, do you, what are your thoughts? Um, well, you are, know, are you, are I, you a I, PS4 player? Uh, I would be if I had one. <laughs> um, I, I, you know, I mean, I, I had the PS1 and the PS2, uh, the PS3. I had the Xbox original, Xbox uh, 360. Uh, and that and that's kind of where it stopped, uh, mostly because I stopped living with the the guy that like was the biggest gamer in the world for <laughs> like ten years or whatever. Um, and uh, and but 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 uh, and, and there, there are a lot of games I really loved on all those systems. But you know, um, you know, when I looked into it, um, I guess there's a little bit of more RAM. Um, Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, I guess the, there's going to be a higher clock system and bandwidth. Um, but why is it not the five? Uh, can, can you explain to me? I mean, cause I know that what they're saying is you can, you're still going to be able to play all the games that developers are creating. And I think this has to do with a game developer issue that they don't want to, uh, you know, Stop me if I'm wrong, because I'm probably am, because I probably don't know what the hell I'm talking about. But it seems like that maybe they they're they're allowing developers who are already years into a game to uh, carry on and know that it's going to be the same as it would have been for the four. But it's just going to be better because it's going to be on the four point five. So and I thought Neo was a Disney fish. <laughs> that's that's Nemo. Nemo. Okay. <laughs> so close. Um, so th- this is uh, th- this is where I'm at with the version number. They no in- incremental upgrades happen all the time. Mm-hmm. That that's a that's a regular thing. They don't change the model name or they change the model number, but they don't change what they call it or anything else. For instance, the the Star Wars uh, PS4 that I have here is the 3001 series. The PlayStation 4 that my kids have back home is the 2001 series. There's you know, minor differences. I think, uh, th- well, this one has like a, a couple, but they're, they're actual buttons instead of the little capacitive touch thing for the eject button and stuff. Um, as far as this goes, going from a 4.0 to a 4.5, first of all, they're not changing the, the software part of it. The software is staying the same. Mm. The general architecture, as far as the APIs and how how the software is going to re- interact with the games and the system, all that stays the ch- the same, which is one of the big things that changes between you know major revisions. 
And that's one of the reasons why you have cross compatibility issues. And I think that sticking with the PS4 moniker, because it is, it is a couple years old, but it's nowhere near as old as what we're, you know, we're going about, about to mention that the 360 here was around for a decade. And the PS4 has been around for a couple years. They still need to extend that out. And there's no need to go into a whole new system if they can just do a, a minor bump of the specs in order to get the VR a, a more pleasurable experience. Um, yeah, and all of the, the PlayStation 4 games will be able to be played on the 4.5. Right. right. If, they, if they did a full, like, new version, like, for example, the play, most of your PlayStation 3 games cannot be played on the PlayStation 4. Right, and that has to do with the, the system architecture and the, the operating system. So Right. So the, Yeah, so the OS and the architecture is the same on the 4.5. It's just upgraded parts. Yep. It's a hard thing. So, yeah. 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 Interesting. Well, I don't want to lead you. I know you're probably not ready to move into the next uh, story you've got about the 360, but how is that different no. with the 360 issue? So, as far as the 360 being discontinued? Yes. Um, so the, the, well, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm, I, I'm, I just, I'm just saying this, those my, I'm going to hold my questions until our next topic. So, <laughs> go. so, so the Xbox 360's uh, production run is ending. Uh, Microsoft is not going to make any more. They're going to sell their current stock at uh, normal prices. And just let the let the markets figure them figure itself out at that time. Um, some some stat, quick stats on this: uh, it became, it went on sale in late 2005. I think it was like November 2005. Right, just before Christmas. Right. Uh, it sold more than 80 million units worldwide, and the Xbox, the original Xbox production, lasted for about three and a half years. This has gone almost 11. So that shows the longevity of it. Of course, they did several hardware revisions. They finally got rid of, rid of the uh, Red Ring of Death that plagued my first two Xboxes or Xbox 360s. And this was it was, it was a great system. I have one sitting right over there, um, and it was, an, it was an amazing system. I'm really, I'm kind of glad to see it go. Like you know, for them to officially shut it down because they're still releasing new games on it. But the new games they're releasing on it, and then you look at the, the Xbox One version, it's just completely night and day. But I think this really shows that Xbox One has finally hit its stride. And, by the way, there's rumors that there might be a hardware revision for that as well. Huh. Uh. It's all about the VR. They've got to they got to bump up the specs for the VR. So Now, Jackie, so it, you had an Xbox 360. Uh, well Yes, I did. Oh, yeah. Um, actually, and I did wait in line uh, that, that December back in 2005, um, you know, of, of 24 hours uh, and, you know, like a Best Buy or a Walmart or something. I can't remember, um, it, you know, with my ex at the time. Uh, we got we got his game, uh, the, the system. And we, we, we of course, we were big Halo players back at the time. And uh, and then uh, the cat that you saw earlier in pre-show walking around, um, which was his cat at the time, uh, one day uh, peed on it. And I had to call him while he was at work because I saw smoke coming from the 360. Oh, my God. And I could smell it. And I said, you know, I'm so sorry. I know you're at work, uh, you know, but there's smoke coming from the 360. He's like, I'll be there right away. He hung up. And within uh, seconds, his car er, pulls in. He goes to check out the 360. Um, and needless to say, I'm not with him anymore. And his cat is now my cat. Um, oh. <laughs> he, le he left. He left both the three, the 360, me and the cat, uh, and took off. Um, but uh, no, no, I mean it wasn't that tragic. But um, but 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 uh, yeah, no. I, but so, do you think is that the reason why they're 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 just now doing a no a completely new system and they're not doing the three hundred and sixty anymore? Or because I don't get this, I don't get these increments. And and I guess you were trying to explain that to me because it just seems like if they want, is it because of the VR that they've got to do a whole new system? So well, the 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 three hundred and sixty. I mean, you can only produce it for so long before it starts getting aged and everything else, except for the PS1, which stuck around for like over two decades, I think. Um, something ridiculous. There's, they might still be making them. I'm not sure. <clears throat> um, but the 360 with the Xbox One that came out, the, everything's just it's it, the the natural transition is to go to the newer system because major gamers are going to want the best graphics, they're going to want the best controls, they're going to want the newest technology, everything else. So when sales of the 360 declined to a certain point, it's no longer profitable to continue making it. 
Um, and then, you know, the Xbox One and the PS4 came out. And now the VR is looking like it's going to hit pretty big this holiday season. Excuse me. <clears throat> they, they're looking at the specs on their systems and realizing, hey, if we're going to run this at the resolution and the, the speeds that people want, we need to, you know, increase the stats on, you know, increase the processor power, the RAM speeds and everything else on the systems that we currently have out. So that's why, you know, PlayStation is doing a revision and I wouldn't doubt that Microsoft is going to do a revision as well to handle the same things because VR is very intensive. Yeah. So, Crunchy. Hi. Are you there? <laughs> I'm here. It's so are, I don't. Are, are, you, are you are you a gamer at all? Um, I'm too poor to get any of the new stuff. The newest thing I have is a Nintendo 3DS because Pokemon. Um, but as far as I'm concerned, I don't think that anything after the PS2 was needed. Like I have a few games I play on there, but, um, I don't think anything else is really like, you can't beat the classics. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So I think that that's, that's, that's what it comes down to is all the new stuff is new and we like the old stuff because we're not new. So <laughs> yeah, you're not going to beat. Pokemon, Super Mario Brothers, Zelda, Metroid, games like Spyro. that. Spyro. Spyro. Spyro's yeah. my jam. Uh, see, I never played Spyro. I was always more of a, like, I, I still love F-Zero, the original F-Zero. Oh, my God. Yeah. Like, that game's so, just amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that was my introduction to drifting, and uh, holy shit. Um, <clears throat> so... Um, so Amos and Kent, uh, of these two new systems, the uh, 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 Neo or the, uh, the or the new 360 or Xbox, whatever it might be called, what what are you more inclined towards? Mm. Uh, well, I'm a I'm a PlayStation guy. I've never actually owned an Xbox of any iteration, uh, and that's just because, I, like, I, I started playing PlayStation when it, when it came out years and years ago. And then I just stuck with that. I just never had a reason to try the other console. But but are you going to upgrade your PS4 to a 4.5? No. no, no, there's no way. That, that, I have that, reason. That, that's where that's where I'm sitting. Is there's you know I've got two PS4s, one for me and one for the kids, and there's no way that I'm going to be upgrading. Uh, I, I don't think VR is going to hit as big as the. I think it's, it's still going to be buggy this this holiday season. I think we're going to wait for VR version two. You know the that's, next. The next well, revision yeah. of all this new hardware. Well, you know me; I'm not an early adopter with anything like that. Right. Um, so I, you know, I let you get the Apple Watch to see if it was even worth my while, and it turns out that it certainly is not. Uh, but you know, and this is going to be the same thing with with VR with me. If if VR turns out to be absolutely awesome, like everybody is is saying it's going to be, okay, maybe I'll maybe I'll get into it. But I'm going to wait and let now, everybody else. Now I think VR is going to be amazing. It's going to be huge. Mm-hmm. I just don't think it's there yet. I think it's going to be the next the next iteration. Right, right. Yep. Jackie, no, I, are you uh, are you looking forward to the VR? Oh yeah, actually, I I am. Um, but uh, just because I I've, I've I've heard so many so many people that I kind of I kind of trust their gaming experience that I've had, you know. Uh, the connection with it are so excited about it. I can't help but to be excited. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, but I mean, I don't know that I'll go get the system. You know, I mean, I just, uh, oh, God, there are too many television shows to podcast on. You know, I, I, I just wonder. But, but there's nothing greater than letting a game just absorb you and um, just spending your time, uh, just kind of taking, zoning out, and then with with the world and just tuning into a game for a while. So, so I definitely would like that. I, and by the way, I mean, again, I'm extremely young, and when I was uh, one years old, I think I owned a Dreamcast. <laughs> and <laughs> oh, you and like seven other people, <laughs> right? And then, um, yeah, when when everybody else was starting get to to, because I like I had the op. No, I, when I was one years old, I had the option to get a PlayStation or like a Dreamcast at that time. And for some reason, I got one with the Dreamcast. But uh, when I was, when my mother was a child and I wasn't even in her womb, I was playing the um, Atari that way back in the day. So, um, I, you know, I'm Kent, extremely young. Ken still has an Atari <laughs> set up right behind him. Yep. 
Oh, uh, nice. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, he, he, um, he's one. He's one of those. So not awesome. not only is he frugal, he's he's hoarderish, but sometimes <laughs> it ends up being good. Oh no no no! You can't be. You can, you're not a hoarder if you if you're collecting game systems. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm guessing Crunchy's only gonna go with the VR route if there's VR Pokemon. Yeah, they're making Pokemon Go. Um, the the thing is, I just don't really have a lot of free time either. Yeah. It's a problem. God, Although adulting um, is hard. I know. I just have to uh, chime in with Jackie's talking about like her ex-boyfriends and being gamers and stuff. There, I had one that um, he had all his friends each brought their own TV to our house, and they Did would a all land just, party. Woo! Yeah, Sorry, pretty much. And they like ran up my electricity bill that he never paid for jack shit. I mean, I say our house because his name was on it because I needed his credit. <laughs> but I mean, it was it was my house. I bought everything. I paid for everything. And all it did mm. was run up the electricity bill like tenfold. And it was super annoying. Mm. <laughs> I, I've, I, I've been to I've, I've I've hosted one land party and it was on a like a Saturday afternoon a couple of my friends from work and uh, some other folks came by. We had, I don't know, like six TVs set up. We were playing Rainbow Six um, mm. on the Xbox. And you had to put the TVs in places where people couldn't see the other TVs. Well, yeah, yeah. We, we put them all in a, in a tri- well, we put them in triangles. So you could only see the TV that you were looking at. You know, That's... you couldn't see the other ones. Yeah, it was, it was great. It was, it was amazing. Best um, days ever. I, I've never done a LAN party on anything except for PCs. <laughs> and I haven't done a LAN party of any sort in... Holy God! Probably fifteen years. Yeah, like it's been so long. They're gonna yeah. have like a giant one here in Austin. I can't remember what it's called though. Somebody mm. in chat might know, but mm. like a giant one. Huh. The, it, 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 like like my the biggest time or the best memories I have of like everybody bringing over like crip, uh, terrible uh, Mexican marijuana and, and <laughs> booze and stuff <laughs> in college was. Uh, I think it was around uh, 2005, right before the 360 came out, and it was on the Xbox One, and we were playing Halo, and uh, we would, you know, it was a total LAN party, and you could connect online, and that was right when people started to find a way to play the Xbox original online, but people were able to um, uh, uh, cheat somehow. I don't know how they were able to get, like, you know, if you tried to play with somebody online. They would, uh, it, the, the first thing you know, they would be teabagging you. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and, and like you would just totally lose. But, um, uh, <laughs> but that, but that was a total, that, that was so much fun. Uh, we would set it up in our, our house with our f- friends and people would try to put up mirrors so we could see their TV screen. And you could tell where they were in certain levels just based off the sounds of yep. where they were at. Yeah. Mm, uh, yes. b- best days ever. And uh, you know, I'm I'm kidding about the Mexican uh, crappy <laughs> marijuana. Doubt it. You know, you Fair get enough. you know when you when you get a, when you have a medical license, it's a whole different thing, ball game. <laughs> so um, so speaking of, of trying to find your way around things, uh, Opera, <laughs> Opera's developer channel now has a, a free VPN service on it, and I I kind of got a little excited about this. I, I wanted to hear Kent's opinion because uh, we. we We've, we've, we sometimes differ on these things. Um, it's available on the, on the de- developer alpha channel. Man, my mouth just stopped working. <laughs> Only redirects browser traffic, so the rest of your, your PC just goes off into where, wherever it's supposed to go. And it's coming to iOS. So, Kent, what is your thought on having a VPN built into the browser? Yeah, so I was about to mentioned that opera is a browser um a lot of people have never heard of opera um i think the only reason that i know of opera well probably two reasons um one when like way back in the late 90s early 2000s when i was learning html and css and all of that sort of stuff i wanted to test my pages on every possible browser like Mm. what whatever a viewer might possibly see my web page on. I want to make sure it looks good. So I I had probably eight browsers and like uh, uh, like virtual environments for different uh, like the web TV. Remember the old web TV? Um, well, anyway, so Opera was one of the browsers, and it was kind of a, a scaled down 
browser that I really liked. Uh, it didn't have a whole lot of um, you know bells and whistles that just eat up your memory. Um, so I really liked that browser. And the, the, my second encounter with, with Opera was when I was playing with Ubuntu, uh, the, the Linux build. Distro, yeah. Yeah. Um, but other than that, like I've, I, I haven't heard anything about Opera in several years. And this is the first time, this article is the first time I've, I've heard about it in a while. So the, the fact that you haven't heard about Opera in several years just shows that you are not a listener of DTNS. That's all I'm going to say. Right. Yeah. I, I listen to D, DTNS maybe one show every four months or something, maybe. Um, but that's just that's just because of I listen to so many other podcasts and I've only I, I pretty much only listen to podcasts when I drive. So <laughs> whatever I can fit into my to my commute. Uh, but no, having a VPN built into a browser, I think, is really freaking awesome. If you can nail down the security issues that are going on with it. Um, but just the idea is really cool. Um, uh, a big problem you being a military guy and, and traveling around the world and stuff like that. It's a problem sometimes just watching a YouTube video while you're in another country because it's, it's, uh, region coded for mm -hmm. the United States for, or like here in Korea, you have to have a Korean cell phone in order to, uh, make sure that you're the right age for YouTube. And my cell phone that I got on base is a contractor phone. So it doesn't oh. doesn't identify with my, with a person, so I can't I can't unlock YouTube here. Yeah, see, and that and that's a that's a problem that VPNs solve, and that's, I mean, there's a lot of other um, privacy things and like um, you know if you want to hide your identity and things like that that VPNs are good for. Uh, but for my personal use, it would be mostly uh, region coding stuff, and I think that's I think that's brilliant to put that in a browser. I, I'm surprised nobody's done it before now. Jackie, have you ever gone through a VPN service? Oh yeah, all, all, all the time. Um, I, I'm, uh, I, you, you know what? I, I've made allusions to smoking marijuana on the show. I can go ahead and make, uh, you know, suggestions that maybe I perhaps occasionally change my VPN to catch something, to watch what I want, to where I want on any damn device I want. Um, uh, and I, right. I, I hope, I hope the day <laughs> comes where I didn't, I never have to do that again. Uh, but you know that that's going to be extremely hard. A lot is some of the stuff I watch is are, is from the UK, and the UK has like a television tax, and you can't get kind of get around that. But um, but yeah, yeah, I uh, definitely I I love this, and um, I'm so sick of Chrome being such the resource hog it is. Uh, the, I I think this I think this changes it all for me. I'm gonna I'm gonna go and check out Opera. Um, I did see that there was some kind of a few little security flaws that mm -hmm. you're not completely hidden. Um, there, uh, there, there is an exploit to find your actual IP address. Right. And, and you know, I mean, if, yeah. And oh, yes. And that's my hope is that at least it's there. At least it's a start. And, you know, and, and to me, when, when more and more people use these kind of roundabouts to, to go through different uh, national channels to get something on the internet, I think all it does is just show uh, you know what, entertainment industry around the world, maybe you should open it up a little bit more to people. Uh, maybe you should make it something that uh, that is more inclusive. Uh, and, and the faster you find a way around it, the better your industry uh, will, or more successful your industry will be. So, I, you know, I, I'm willing to take that because, I mean, I'm personally not hiding anything. Um, and, and uh, you know, I can use a Tor browser if I want to, uh, get around a lot of stuff, but, um, uh, you know, but, 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 but yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about this. And the, today was the f my first time hearing about it. And, um, I'm, I'm, I mean, I, I'm not sure when this was actually announced, but, uh, I'm very excited about it. Hey, Crunchy, do you, uh, do you use VPNs when you go to hotels? Nope. <laughs> I don't go to hotels though. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you, know, you have a pretty good setup where you're at. Like, you don't need to kind of hide your to your provider what you're doing, kind of stuff. Yeah, I I actually uh, I I VPN a lot, especially being here in Korea. Um, constantly VPN and back to the states in order to uh, watch shows or to be able to download files. The PlayStation Store does not work in Korea at all. Mm -hmm. Like, I, it won't accept my. Uh, 
well, I can't say that the PlayStation Store doesn't work. It will not accept my payment method yep, yep. while I'm here in Korea. So I have to go on the computer, VPN back to California, add money to my account, and then once I've done that, I can do whatever I want. You know, I can I can go back to the PlayStation and buy stuff or whatever, but it won't actually charge my card if it sees that I'm, uh, that I'm in Korea, which is really, really annoying. And I know there's some people around here that don't understand VPNs that they've given up on playing like you know digital games because they just they can't get them over here yeah that was a problem and, uh, as well mm. I, I was going to say that 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 is like the perfect ex reason to use a vpn mm. uh, uh you're you're basically an american you're uh or uh, i don't know if you're expatriate or what exact exact status is but you're outside and you want to just get to the things you would have would be getting if you were at home yep. and uh I, I think that that's a, that's a simple solution. And also, uh, what I saw is this is not a way a work around Netflix uh, for Australia, which is a big thing because uh, you know Australian internet uh, apparently is kind of the worst when you're trying to stream. And so this is not going to be a fix to to be able to get to American uh, Netflix or UK Netflix via Australia. Um, but, uh, you know, but you can do that with other VPNs and, and so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's just a matter of making the internet work better, you know, and, and I'm sorry, I didn't mean to stop you, but, but that sounds, uh, that sounds like the perfect reason to use it. Yeah. And if this doesn't suit your fancy, there are others out there. Uh, the VPN that I use is 40 bucks a year, you know, 39 95 for a whole year. And it's actually, it runs really well. So. Yeah. And, and that's the, the big thing about opera putting this in their browser. It's going to be completely free they're yep. not charging anyone anything well at least not they have not announced plans to do so now uh, now oh, something sorry. something big go is they they're currently um looking at selling to a chinese consortium now this is this is interesting they have 72 percent out of the 90 percent of stockholders they need in order to make the sale go through they the thought of having a a vpn coming out of China, like uh, that, that's an interesting dynamic for, to get around the, the great wall of, uh, the great internet wall of China, the great firewall of China. So would, if they were bought by the, by the Chinese company would, or the consortium, would they maintain their, their independence outside of China? Would they go to be based in China and thereby held by Chinese rules that can't VPN around the firewall? I mean, that's, that's this just sounds like a bad idea. Like nothing about that sounds good. <laughs> Which is they, why they still need eighteen percent more stockholders to, it, <laughs> to acknowledge it the sounds, deal. <laughs> it sounds pretty. It sounds pretty good for some of those Chinese that are still trying to get on Facebook. Uh, I know. I know most uh, Chinese are able to find a way to get on Facebook, but it's still right, as far it, as I remember, remember blocked by China, company. the Chinese right. government. But yeah, but that's the thing. Like a Chinese company buying this, are they going to be subject to? Chinese law, right? And if so, mm -hmm. that's, that's not going to help anybody, right? That's basically going to shut down the service. Like I, I don't. That that's what makes this very interesting to see how it plays out. If they do sell to the Chinese consortium, and if they do, uh, what happens to the VPN that they're adding in and other features that they're adding in? Like it's 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 Ooh. no, that's bunk. Like I don't I don't the, like that. This is why I follow tech news. This is my drama. You have the WWE. I have tech news. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's a good thing we have podcast, so you can keep me up to date on all the. It's the showdown. Uh, so, uh, so we have uh, we have four Diamond Clubbers on the show tonight, um, and we have some Diamond Club news. This same as last week. W or uh, uh, hat t two t two e u. Cruise on over there. Nominate some Diamond Club podcasts for some uh, for the podcast awards. The, it's really simple. T two T two has it all set up. It, it's I mean I, my mom might not be able to follow it, but <laughs> everyone everyone higher than that on the technology scale should be able to just clicky clicky make it happen. Uh, there's a little bit of typing you got to do, but it's really simple. Um, go over there if you haven't done it. You can only do it once. Uh, Nominations close April thirtieth. Let's get uh, get all the Diamond Clubbers in there that we can, and let's rock this place. Let's hat the system again this year. Yep, absolutely. So, all right, ladies, uh, you you guys have your own podcast together, like where you sit and you talk about 
issues <laughs> that that ladies talk about. I'm guessing they don't you normally don't talk about it. And it has nothing to do with ladies, which is the magical part of it. <laughs> I think I think we've kind of uh, hidden that behind <laughs> our little facade of women and chit chatting and to coffee and tea music when we start our show. But uh, Crunchy, uh, can you explain explain the concept or how we how the hell do we decide to do this? You know, I mean. It's how more your brainchild than mine. How did we decide to do it? <laughs> I don't even. And, and, you're, and now you're asking yourself, why Jackie never shuts up? <laughs> you're always the one talking. Why am I talking now? It's... No, I think you had said something to me like a long, long time ago when I lived in Dallas about um, wanting to do something with like. I, I think I was probably drunk. I was like, you're so funny, Crunchy. <laughs> we should do a probably. show. Probably. <laughs> go 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 i'm sorry i just stopped no that was about it you said something and then i was like fuck you i'm too busy like i have like 500 finals to study for this shit's not happening and now i moved and i don't have finals to study for um i just have a job now because i didn't have a job in dallas but, um mm. yeah so jackie said let's do a show about being women Women stuff. We need no, women not, stuff. That is not what I said. <laughs> Something close. Something close. No. Something close. It, See, it, well then, what happened? What happened? I, I, how, I know, how did I, we come up with this thing? I, I, I have no idea. It's just that you make me laugh endlessly. And like, the funny <sighs> thing is, is that like I keep joking that we're in beta. And so Crunchy and I, we do a little bit of a pr planning show. Um, and, and, and we keep thinking, okay, at one point we're not going to do, need to do any planning. We're just going to have a doc. We're going to go. And, uh, and then as we sit through the planning part portion, I, I am just choking over laughing. I can't sit up straight, um, vomiting everywhere. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. That's, that's not very, that's okay. not true, but because she's la she's making me laugh so hard. And then we get to the show and it's so much stress because everything goes wrong and, I don't think our viewers have really had a chance to see like what is to come of our show. Like I think we're gonna and 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 again, it is, it's not just about women. Um, like Crunchy, Cr Crunchy is a self-proclaimed woman hater, correct? Very much correct. <laughs> <laughs> and so then I'm the feminist, but I mean I'm a feminist, yeah. But I mean I just kind of think we, you know, let's all just get along and. And and so I'm I'm trying to take the other kind of but it but but, but whatever our, our, I, it, it's funny how closely our views are the same and and we we just talk these stories about not just women but um you know we've got a segment about how they are crazy crazy uh, bitches and but it doesn't just apply to women it could be men it could be dogs it could be cats it could be chickens like whatever is crazy. <clears throat> and we just bounce it off with our, our guest and then move into a game. And uh, and it's been a lot of f it's been a lot of fun. It's like it's like one of the things I look forward to the most uh, in, in my sad little life. <laughs> How many episodes in are you guys now? Uh, uh, we, we've eight? done six. We will be doing no, seven. We've done this seven or season. eight because we did a couple beta. That's all of them. <laughs> we're we're we're, curr we're currently on the seventy seventh beta episode, so uh, we know well, we that we know like that beta feeling. One, we had beta two, and then we went live, and then we that that's when we started promoting it. Um, but uh, um, yeah, cr uh, crunchy. Like I mean, like like don't don't you think? I mean, what what do you think our goals are? I mean, don't don't you kind of see that we're just kind of in a transition to where we're you know, starting to bring in more Diamond Club people and becoming more of a party show than uh, just you and I just shooting the shit kind of thing. Or It is a party you... show. That's why we have slumber party games and stuff. <laughs> yes, I know, I know. It's just a big party. And don't you dare try to freeze my bra. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to dip your fingers in water so you pee yourself. During the show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because I mean, you we all know that at this point, pee is pretty much my specialty. Like, he just pee finds me, and it's ridiculous. Well, no, Diamond Club pee finds you. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, <laughs> not that's, just uh, Diamond Club pee. Pee everywhere finds me. It's horrible. Uh, 
Um, <laughs> you know, and and you know, one of the things I loved about Crunchy is that she is she is just a gold mine of stories. And now with uh, with the work she does, working with these dead bodies, having to tape women's boobs together, like I mean, you you just can't get any better than the stories that crun- you have, Crunchy. See, um, I, I I have this thing where I like to know about people and I like to see what makes them tick. You know, sometimes I'll just fuck with them without even telling them just to make sure that, you know, just to see the reaction. I was listening to a, a Hello Internet episode earlier today and they brought up the idea of if there's an asteroid heading towards Earth and is going to destroy the Earth, would you want to know and would you want to tell anybody? Mm. And... It's such a amazing because to me the the answer to me is okay if it's an inevitability I'm not going to tell everybody because they're going to go ape shit you know crazy. But inside I'm like oh yeah yeah I want to tell people because I want to see how they react. Okay, give me a day to barricade myself against the stupidity in the world <laughs> and then tell everybody, you know. Um, but I'm I'm kind of a nihilist that way. I, I you know it it just happens. So I love hearing stories. Crazier the better. And Crunchy, like, I've met you twice. Uh-huh. And both times, I couldn't get a word in because you had some crazy story going that I couldn't even ask about because I was laughing too hard or just, just like, I couldn't believe what was going on with it. So, um, and of course, I was imbibed with alcohol. So there's that. Um, that's that's the other thing is I talk <laughs> a lot more when I drink. <laughs> Otherwise, I don't yeah, talk I was as gonna much. Say- for you to not get a word in, like, that doesn't make any sense because uh, with her, <laughs> she's telling you about, like, well, the, there was this arm I had to pick up from a laboratory and, uh, you know, it was like, you know, part of it had it contained, like, a bear can, but then the other car to- uh, arm, there was a uh, po- toaster pop. Um, and, you know, and so there's these stories, but with me, it's kind of like, oh my God, I just, I couldn't get my internet working, so I was trying to get online and I, it's really, <laughs> so it's like the <laughs> It's great. I had to go pick up a bunch of heads the other day from a hotel. Did you really? um, Yeah. From from a hotel? Yeah, in a hotel. And there are like people walking around. I'm like, so how many are there? And she's like, there are four heads. And I'm like, oh, shh. Don't say that. I'm going to freak the hotel people out. Where the hell are the the, the heads from? Like, like this. (laughs) I'm sure the hotel didn't just find four heads. (laughs) <laughs> no, it's, um, <laughs> I don't know why they sent it to a hotel to begin with, though, but there's um, a lot of like a lot of um, companies will use specimens for a lot of like, you know, like medical shit, like the training people that the people that need to use cadavers to train, you know, mm. no uh, dentists, uh, medical people, surgeons <laughs> need to learn on I people. Yeah, I mean, that's why I'm doing the show I could, with you. I, I could never be a dentist if I had to go drilling in and tearing apart an actual human head. Like I understand that's like the best practice. Like you know, tattooing yourself is the best way to learn how best to tattoo. Or you know, but no, I, I just and I'm not I'm not I'm not a person that's squeamish around dead bodies or anything else. But I it just it's one of those things. Like this is not necessary for my life. You know what the really <laughs> ironic part about that is? Find. Find me an embalmer that won't like the first thing they say if they see someone's mouth is like have to like, you know, work around. It's like all of them will be like, I could never be a dentist. This is fucking disgusting Mm -hmm. (laughs) because of the mouth. And then all the dentists are like, like, well, not all the dentists, but like you were like, I couldn't be a dentist because you have to play around with the dead bodies, not the mouth, the dead bodies. Like it just it switches and it's funny. All right, ladies, where, uh, where, where, where can we find more of you guys? Crunchy? Um, I am at Crunchy89 on Twitter. Crunchy is spelled with a K. That's important. What, was, also, was Crunchy with a K already taken? You had to throw the 89 in there? Yes. Ugh, see? See, Kent, you're I not know. the only one. Yeah. I know. <laughs> where else? Um, I have this little blog thing, because right now I'm just not buying food. And that's pretty much the main focus of it right now. But I have a blog thingy, and that's crunchfiles.weebly.com. And if you wow. guys want to check it out, give me ideas of shit to do. Because so, the thing so. is, I just get I just get really, really bored, and I need to go do stupid stuff. And I'm just not creative enough to think of stuff myself. So if you dare me to do something, I'll do it. <laughs> I'll get it on film that's, for you. It'll be fun. 
Diamond yeah. Club after hours. Um, so <laughs> how long has it been since you actually bought food? 23 days. 23 days. <clears throat> and how many of those did you go without eating at all? Um, I'm none. guessing none. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, lo- the other day, I just, uh, I ate like a little bit of rice and then I was just really distracted. I was too like busy to eat. So that's, that's, oh. it's just amazing. I mean, I, I think that's a, a, a social experiment that's worthwhile in and of itself. So good right? on you. <laughs> all right, Jackie, how about you? Now you, you've got things everywhere. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm not going to bore everybody to death in pieces <laughs> with it, which I've already done. But I'm at Jackie Hearn 81 on Twitter. Uh, you can find all my shenanigans at JackieHearn.com. Uh, also, lately, I've been um, streaming, live streaming on Twitch, a uh, creative, uh, some of my sock puppet ven- ventures, like, uh, you know, ahoy. <laughs> and um, I, um, I, I'm putting together a Patreon where I'm taking the sock puppets and kind of moving into a, a realm where hopefully I can involve other wonderfully creative uh, Diamond Club people who do uh, visual effects, uh, videography, uh, video, videography and um, um, co- comedy writers and other things and, and get to a point where maybe we could do a little Kickstarter and do a short film. So if you want to head over... By the time do you get you're recording this and posting this later, right? Uh, I'll probably post it tomorrow. I usually uh, do all my edits on Sunday because this is Saturday for me right now. Okay, if you're listening to this on Monday or Tuesday, uh, you can you can probably find my Patreon at uh, Jack at, at Patreon slash uh, Jackie Hearn. And I'm not I'm not asking you. I'm all I'm asking for is just the socks. And a little, a little bucks, uh, just to get to a point where I can, I can involve a Diamond Club community venture. So that's where you can find me. That's and awesome. oh, by the way, you can find us. Follow us at T T O T M Pod. That's that time of the month Pod. So it's T T T. Country, you're so much better this than I am. T T O T M Pod on Twitter. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh and and um and you can also find us on youtube and that's where you can find our shows um if you don't catch us that way but we're also on itunes at that time of the month podcast awesome um and jackie i know you do a lot of things for other diamond club shows as well uh very heavily involved in the community uh i guess yeah i mean i book shows for cord killers um and uh i guess that's about it uh, really um um, and, uh, and I do a couple of other fan casts that are past, are now in hiatus. So I, no, I mean, other than, uh, the, um, uh, the, the house of cards that I did with Roberto Villegas, which is on the British tech network. So which, yeah, which, no, which, done. which by the, by the sound of it, he, it may be, uh, going into hiatus for you if you don't shut up. No. Yes, exactly. <laughs> right. Exactly. You got it. You nailed it. All right, Ken. Nailed it. How about you? RM underscore Del Noche on Twitter. There's always something weird going on on my Twitter, so check it out. Yep. Uh, you, if you're a beer person, you can go to ratebeer.com and look up username Del Noche, and you can read my reviews. Um, I've also got another podcast with my son, Lucas. It's called Film Zone. Look it up on on uh, iTunes. Oh, Lucas is your son? I thought it was just like a kid that hung out and watched movies. Uh, well, he's kind of that. That's but he's creepy. Like, yeah. He's also biologically my son. So. Bi- biologically your son, but he, he's actually he's like he's a little dude now. Like, I know it's, it's crazy. He's he's what sixteen? Yeah, uh, like all seventeen years old. <laughs> so we can find that at Lucas Zone on iTunes. Is that right? The uh, film, film Zone. zone. Yep. Uh, I'm sorry. Repeat. I couldn't. Film Zone. Uh, you can find it on Twitter at Film Zone Cast. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Or if you look on iTunes, it's it's called Film Zone. Yep. Okay. So uh, so yeah, I'm I'm Ethan Kane on Twitter. Don't ask. And you can find the show at Ritual Misery. Really, Twitter is the only thing that I even even bother with anymore. Everything else is just auto plugged. It's just plug and play. It just feeds into the Facebooks and everything else. And uh, <clears throat> oh, you know, I think I forgot to put this on Facebook today. Oh well. So, yeah, look up uh, Ritual Misery on Twitter, and then you can find the show, of course, at ritualmisery.com. And if you want to submit ideas to our subreddit that we, we vastly underuse, unfortunately, it's ritualmisery.reddit.com. So you can cruise on over there and do all that. Um, you can find everything else for us at ritualmisery.com, all the projects that we're working on, everything, all that stuff. 
And if you want to support the show, that's there as well. Uh, thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music. For Crunchy, for Jackie, for Kent, and for you, this is your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya. Podcastawards.com for Ritual Misery. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>